Romans, and so if you would turn with me to Romans, we're going to be in chapter 5 and chapter 6, and the title of the message today is, Sin is Dead to Me. Yes. You like that? Sin is Dead to Me. And so today, as we celebrate water baptisms, this is what water baptisms is all about. It's about the fact that we have put our faith in Jesus for our salvation, for our forgiveness, for our healing, and for our holy wholeness. And so in water baptism, what we are doing in Romans, it reveals that we are participating in what Christ did when he died on the cross and he was rose again. He died to sin. It was it no longer had a hold on him. There was no no uh, no way that uh, sin was going to come to life. He rose again in the power of the Spirit of God. And each individual, as we are water baptized, that is exactly what we are doing. We are saying. We're, we are dying to sin. Sin no longer has a hold of us. We are rising to new life. We are rising in newness of life, empowered by the Spirit, where sin no longer has a hold on us. And so this morning, I've been encouraging those who uh, are going to be baptized today, uh, I've been encouraging them, hey, you are dying to sin. You're saying, no longer. I'm, I'm no longer going to be that way. I'm no longer going to identify with that. I'm no longer going to be in, in, in my own way, but I'm going to be in Christ's way, in His victory, in His wholeness. And so this morning, this is what we are celebrating. So let's turn, let's see, Romans chapter 5, we're looking and starting in verse 1. It says this, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we celebrate as individuals, as people who have put their faith in Jesus. We now have peace with our Maker, with our Creator, with our Father, God in Heaven. Come on, that's something to get excited about. Yeah. If, if that was the only verse that we would read today, if that's the only verse in all of Scripture, that when we put our faith in Jesus, we now have peace in God. That's something we get a little, little shouty about, right? That's a little, little hit the drums, let's get the tambourines out, let's shout a little bit. Yeah. Because we have peace with God because of the work of Jesus. And again, this is the gospel, that it is not our own works, it is not our own ability. It is through our faith in Jesus and His his perfect submission to the Father that now we can have peace with God ourselves. And if you have not made that peace yet, if you have not experienced that peace yet, I encourage you today to do so, to put your faith in Jesus and say, yes, Jesus, I have faith in you. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you were sent to, to earth. I believe that you died on the cross to take my place. I believe that you wiped away all of my sins. I believe that you raised uh, to life again, conquering he hell, hell, the hell, death, and the grave, and rose to new life. Yes, I believe that you are now sitting at the right hand of the Father, and I too, by putting my faith in you, can be at peace with God. I encourage you today to do so. In putting our faith in Jesus, we are saying no to our own way of living and saying yes to Jesus. Saying not only Jesus, you are now in my heart. No, Jesus, you are not just Savior. You didn't just purchase a ticket for me in heaven. No, Jesus, you are my Lord. We submit now ourselves to him fully. It's His way over our ways of sin. Your love for sin, your pursuit of sin, your pursuit of your own way, your pursuit of your own desires, they are now dead to you. They're cut off. You're not going to give them any more support. You're not going to say, hey, I want to keep this thing going on the side. I got this and I got Jesus. No, today you're saying, hey, I am cutting that off. I, 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 it's dead to me. I no longer want to see it. I no longer want to feed it. I no longer want to support it. It, is, it has nothing to do with me. 
Let's look here in chapter 6 this morning. We're going to go through uh, verse 1 uh, through 11 this yes. morning. And I'm going to try to do this yes. shortly because I know the testimonies are going to be strong. But you're just going to walk with me a little bit through Romans chapter 6 because this is a good message this morning yes. for those of us who believe. A reminder to you that sin is done. For those of you getting baptized, an encouragement to you. Hey, the, the old life is going away. And today you're putting your faith in Jesus completely and saying, hey, I'm raised to new life in you, Jesus, as my Lord. Let's read together Romans chapter 6, starting in verse 1. I want to read all the way through verse 11 today. Uh, so let's go together. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. That's right. By no means. No way. No. All right, we now have peace with the Father. Like, we now have our faith in Jesus. No, don't keep on doing the same thing. Verse 3, uh, sorry, the rest of it. Uh, verse 2. By no means. How can we who die to sin still live in it? Yeah. Denver would say, that's crazy. If you die to say, why would you keep doing it? That's crazy. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him, with Jesus, in death like this, we shall certainly be united with him in resurrection life. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be, what, enslaved to sin. No longer. It doesn't have a hold on me. I've cut it off. I'm dying to it. I'm not a slave to this sin anymore. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him, over Jesus. Death no longer has a dominion over him. He's raised to life. He's sitting with the Father. Or verse 10, it says this. For the death that Jesus died, he died to sin once for all. Yeah. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you, that's each one of us this morning, so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ. You know what the problem with many Christians are? They're not dead yet. Yeah. They haven't decided that the way of faith, the way of Jesus, the way of the Lord is what gives them life. And they have attempted to hold on to death. They've tempted, attempted to hold on to sin and still live for Jesus. Okay, okay old, old school preaching, right? God, and there, 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 there's in, in the Revelation, it talks about being hot or cold, you know, but if, if you're lukewarm, God will spit you out. Some people talk about being on one side of the fence or the other side of the fence, and some of them are sitting on the fence, not sure, halfway in this, halfway in this, and, it says, and, and I've heard old school preachers say this, the devil owns the fence. You're sitting halfway, but it, it's not all in. When we come to Christ this morning, the message, it, sin is dead to you yeah. if you are in Christ. If you find that sin is still uh, is still more attractive to you, you might want to examine the, fa the fact if you have fully submitted yourself to Jesus and said yes to his way. Andrew, I thought we were going to celebrate today. I know, we're going to celebrate today because, hey, there's some people today that's making some decisions saying, yes, I'm dying. I'm, man, that old stuff, my own way, it's out of here, and I'm, I'm choosing Jesus today. And that's what we're celebrating this morning, right? Yeah. That's something to get excited about. But I also have to encourage you this morning. 
Right? That if sin is still reigning in your heart, it's time to die. And maybe you have to examine yourself and you have not fully submitted yourself to Jesus. Let's look at verse uh, 4 of this morning. Verse 4 says, We were buried therefore with him in baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too, you too, we all may walk in the newness of life. It says in here, I love, I love kind of looking at English and looking at like, like the way the, the things is all, all written here. It says, we too might walk in newness of life. We have an option. We have a choice in this. We have a decision to make. Are we going to walk in the newness of life? God is a gentleman. He won't force us. He won't force anything on us. He won't make us do it. He has always offered salvation. He has always offered new life. He has always offered it to us with an open hand. And the decision is ours. The choice is ours. Are we going to walk in the newness of life that he died to give us the free healing salvation that he longs for us to have? This peace eternal forever, this hope with God in heaven, it's all for us. And this morning, I encourage you, just as the individuals that are deciding to be baptized today, I encourage you this morning, choose the newness of life. Choose the way of Jesus. Over and over again, every morning when we rise, every second of the day, say yes to Him. Say yes to Him Amen. over and over. And it promises us in Scripture that when we say yes to Him, when we choose Him, there will be freedom, there will be peace, there will be hope, there will be life that arises within us. Walking with Jesus is beautiful. Walking in His way is perfect, is wonderful. Don't allow the enemy to convince you otherwise. In verse 5 it goes on, For if we have been united with Him in death like this, we shall certainly be with Him in His resurrection like this. When we said yes to Jesus, we were choosing to be crucified. We were choosing to die to our own, our own way of living. And if we have decided, just as Jesus decided, yes, I'm going to go all the way to the cross. Yes, Father, I'm going to submit myself even to the point of death. Yes, Father, I'm going to put my life in your hands completely. If we have chosen to do that same thing, then certainly the Word says, without a doubt... You can be certain of it. We're going to have the resurrection life that Jesus was raised to. We can have that hope in the future of being united with God. Why? Because we have decided, just as Christ did, to fully submit himself to the Father. To go even to the point of death. For you Hello. and for me. Are you willing also to go to that point of dying to self? So that the resurrection life that he experienced now rises in you and makes you new. Romans 8, verse 11. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now is in you. He who, uh, he who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. When we have made a decision of faith to put our faith, to put our trust completely in Jesus, in His way, the Spirit of God, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, it now dwells in us. This isn't our own work. I, 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 I encourage my, my son in this way, right? It, it's not in our own strength. We can't, we can't just white-knuckle our way to heaven. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to live on my own. I'm not going to do it. No. He actually empowers us by the Spirit. The same Spirit, the same power that raised Christ out of the grave, He lives in you. Amen. And so this journey isn't just a, are you strong enough? Are you able to? Can you do the work? No, it's 
God Almighty, I need your spirit to do this in me. Yeah. My choice is to die. I no longer want a part of a, a part of that any longer. And so now, by your spirit, give me power to walk out this life that you died to give me. Just as we die to him, we also rise in him. Yeah. We find our strength in going forward in him, not in ourselves. Verse 6 this morning, we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. It's dead to me. Come on, say it with me. It's dead to me. It's dead to me. It's dead to me, right? So in Christ Jesus, we've been crucified with Him. We have chosen to die to our own way of living and say yes to Him. And why is that? Why? So that sin would no longer enslave us. Man, when I I know I, I know some stories in there, right? When we when we made the decision to follow Jesus, we said no to that way of life. And sometimes the way of life, the way of sin, still kind of comes back and tries to capture us and tries to to influence us. But that has no power over us. In Christ, it has no power. We are the ones that are standing on victory. We now can say to it, I, it's, you're dead to me. I, I have no, it has no influence. That desire, that, that way of life, man, I'm cutting it off by the blood of Jesus. It's cut off. And now I can be free. Amen. Saying, you don't have power over me. Sin, you don't, you, you, you don't need to even come to my door. You don't even, don't even try. It's dead to me. Sin might be brought Verse 7, for one who has died has been set free from sin. Come on, underline that in your, or highlight that in your, in your app. One who has died has been set free from sin. We talked about this when we talked about marriage. Next week we'll continue our, uh, the last message in the, in the series about marriage. Uh, but, you know, here we talked about in marriage, what is the one, one thing that, that would end a covenant? It is death. Death always ends, uh, is able to end covenants. But here we see, again, it emphasized in the aspect of our sin life, one who has died has been set free to sin. Man, are you dead yet? Talked about this message with Denver. He's always like, Dad, it's all about death. I said, well, yeah. We, we come to death so that we can live in Christ. We have to make a decision to put away our old and come alive yeah. in Christ. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over Him. And verse 10, for the death He died, He died to sin once for all. But the life He lives, He lives to God. How then should we live? What then should our life look like? This is why we're going through the Sermon on the Mount as a family, because we're looking at the life of Christ. Christ lived a life fully submitted to his Father, full of life, full of mercy, full of grace, full of truth and grace. Jesus lived as an example to us how we are to live fully submitted to the will of the Father. How are we to live now? What is life to look like now as believers is to look like the glorious life of Jesus Christ. The life Jesus lives, he lives to God. Those getting baptized this morning, I encourage you to read the word, to become one with the word, to know the will of the Father, to know who God is, and then be able to live a life that is submitted completely to who God is, completely holy. Verse 11, the advice, the encouragement this morning. 
so you also. Each one of you. Remember, he started in chapter 5, verse 1. Those of us that have put our faith in Jesus and now have peace with God, now returning in verse chapter 6, verse 11. So you also. So each one who now already has peace with God because we have put our faith in Jesus, so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. My biggest encouragement to you as a believer in Jesus Christ, count yourself, consider yourself dead to sin and alive to Christ. Amen. This morning we have an amazing opportunity to hear stories from individuals that have chosen just that, to say no to sin, to say no to their own way of life, and to follow Jesus, make Him Lord of their life. And so I want to take a moment to pause. We're going to invite the kids to come back upstairs. Denver's been excited to get baptized, so we're invite, going to invite him up uh, to, to join us. Um, but in just a few minutes, I'm going to ask those getting baptized, we're going to go ahead and transition into a time of celebrating what God is doing in people's lives, in this church, in this body, to bring life. Amen. To bring life, right? That's something to celebrate. So let's take a moment. Um, if I could have uh, Richard, could you go ahead and get the, yeah. the kids and have them come upstairs? I told Rachel, I, I'm just going to preach for a little bit. Um, and so I hope that that's at the right time for her message uh, downstairs with the kids. So Vanna and Deshayla, do you mind coming over here and sit here? Like sit up the chairs Yeah, no, go, go ahead right over here and sit in the front row. Yeah. And then uh, come on up with this big hunk of thing out of the way. Chapter 28, we get the we get the instructions, instructions for baptism, and encouragement from Jesus. What does Jesus ask us to do? He asks us to go and make disciples, which is really amazing. It's really awesome that we're making we're making disciples. We're we're being obedient to Jesus. You know when if. if if people, if the church wasn't obedient to this uh, for all generations, then uh, I'll pick this back up because the kids are back in here. That's, a, that's some excitement. If the kids come back, there's excitement in the end. All right. So uh, in Roman, in Matthew, uh, in Matthew chapter uh, 28, uh, there is some there is some good things happening. Matthew 28, Jesus is, is, is getting ready to give this good commission. And he says this, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, Jesus. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Here Jesus gives his instruction to baptize them uh, and, and, and in the name of means the identity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father in heaven. He has made you family. All in this room. He has made us family. Amen. And he has adopted us all into his family. Now we can be brothers and sisters in Christ. Denver sometimes jokes with me because I call everybody brothers and sisters. I said, yeah, you know, we're all love Jesus. We're brothers and sisters in, in Jesus, right? And we are now servants. We're identifying with Jesus as the one who served us even to the point of death. So as I baptize you, I'll say in the name of the Father because, hey, I believe, hey, we're family. 
And, and I'm going to uh, baptize you in the name of the Son, Jesus. Why? Because in the Son, Jesus, He served us to the point of death. And I'm saying, hey, that's going to be an identity that you're going to wear. That you're going to wear the identity of Jesus. That He's a servant of all people. And then the third thing, you're going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is one that speaks truth to us. And so now you are going to be ones that speak truth. Just as the Holy Spirit spoke truth to you. And help you make a decision for Jesus. That same Holy Spirit is in you. And now, when you go forth, I'm going to encourage you to go forth and speak the same truth of who God is with other people. This morning, as we baptize people, not only are we celebrating uh, each one of uh, the, the candidates coming to life in Jesus, we're also celebrating the fact that they are now commissioned. You're now commissioned to go and share Jesus with others. And so, as we are baptized, that's our right to go and make disciples of other people, to baptize them. And so, I encourage you, if there's other individuals that you know that have not made a decision for Jesus, then encourage them to make that decision, to, to follow after Jesus. You are now commissioned uh, uh, to go and to make disciples also. So, I want to encourage you guys uh, to all, we're going to, this is the first time I've, I've been able to do baptism. That's the lead pastor. So, woo! I've been excited. And so, I want to encourage you. This is going to be the norm that at Cap City Church, we're going to be, we're going to have baptism on a regular basis, celebrating what Jesus is doing. And so, we haven't done one before, so I'm going to give you some instructions. When we, when we baptize somebody, it should be something to hoop and holler yeah. and shout about, right? So let's just practice for a moment. You know, let's just, I'm going to pretend that I'm going to baptize somebody, okay? And so when I raise somebody up, I just want us to like all get out, shout, and, and holler, okay? So let's just practice. I'm counting one, two, I'm going to go down. All right, and I'm up. Because what we're doing is we're celebrating life. We're celebrating people coming to Jesus. We're celebrating, hey, their old life is dying today and, and, and they're rising to life. And so, so whenever we have water baptisms, everybody in this room, man, get, get ready to shout a little bit. Because we're rejoicing with what God is doing. Amen? So, uh, so Father, would you come and join me? And I would like you to, to share with everybody what... What is Jesus doing in your life? Can you, and, and I want to encourage you, can you use the mic? All right, pray. <laughs> so I'm really happy that I'm really baptized. Um, so all my life, I just uh, followed a uh, power. I just followed just one power, and then, uh, which led me to this place. And then, as Pastor Andrew told me, uh, it got revealed to you that Jesus was pursuing you. And like Columbia and Amy told me, like the Holy Spirit had been pursuing you your whole life. And uh, it's now that it got revealed to you. And um, I've had a lot of struggles in my life, but now after I accepted Jesus in my life, I accepted Jesus in my heart on 29 September 2019. Amen. Everybody today, uh, but I'm gonna put this mic up so I don't get electrocuted. 
electrocuted stone. <laughs> All right, and here we go. Jesus died for our sins, 
and that is nothing but love to me. And this is this is encouraging for me today. God has been working my heart like crazy, y'all. Like y'all didn't understand. Um, <laughs> some days it may be overwhelming, but he's it's a beautiful thing and it feels amazing. Um, today I'm giving myself um, in the life I'm trying. I'm going to be living moving forward um, by not doing my own thing, but leave, but to live for Jesus. Um, Jesus, today I lay myself down unto you, onto your feet, and let you lead the way. Um, I no longer want to live my way because I get nowhere. So, Lord, I trust you that I will continue to only climb, not only climb up the mountains, but to climb over these mountains. I pray for everlasting peace. Yeah. I am not alone in this walk. You all are with me in this walk. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Oh, 